Hello. Thanks for tuning in to Politically Homeless. We are looking at coronavirus data for California. And uh, it's pretty interesting. So, no, I want to jump to a section. What's going on here? Yeah, let's go back up here. So, it looks like um, out of a population of, I don't know, what do we have? Here we go, 52 million people. Got a lot. So let's just say, it's, I don't know the exact number. I'm guessing off the top of my head. Um, we have 31,530 confirmed cases as of uh, Sunday. And a total of 1,178 deaths. Plus 30 on Sunday. Um, it's it's hard for people to grasp this because these are these are numbers that a lot of people really sucked at math. You know, I, I wasn't that good in, in math because I had really terrible teachers, even though it's something I have a lot of aptitude for and skill in. But um, You're shutting down. Okay, what what is California? The eighth largest economy in the world. Okay, shutting down the eighth largest or seventh, whatever. Top ten? Can we say top ten? Shutting down one of the top ten economies in the world for thirty-one thousand cases and twelve. I'll round up. We'll count tomorrow that hasn't happened yet. 1,200 deaths. You ever seen the movie Idiocracy? We're living in it. <laughs> I watched this like, just these governors come up. Shame on America for electing these tits into office. Well, you reap what you sow. I put out a video a little while ago saying we're going to get the future we deserve. We're getting it. Hopefully, this wakes up most of America to the absolute failure, failure of your state and local representatives. It is not the federal government's job to come in and test every single person in America. You might think it is. I care to disagree it is not their job this is not something that they need to do any more than they look we are incurring massive debt and they are helping out we're we're going to get the newest um, small business package hopefully banged out today and damn the democrats all the rotten burn in hell if they obstruct and don't get it done because that is the real lifeblood of our economy. And if small business gets screwed here, it's going to be a big trouble. Because these governors, it's, it's almost like they want, they, that's what it is. They get a taste of power and then they don't want to give it up. Oh, this is great martial law. I can do whatever I want. Oh, the power. Not in America. Not with this. Are you kidding me? Now look, if you've lost someone to coronavirus, I'm sorry. I really am. It might strike me. It might strike my family. Who knows? Actually, I do know. Or I have a 97 percentile confidence that I've already had this thing. As this explains that why the numbers are so low. We'll get into that in a minute. But this ties into everything that I've been saying for months now. I really hope people do check out some of my earlier videos. It's kind of depressing when, you know, you see it. And it's not depressing for ego or views. It's just that was the correct information. And just how stupid people are and lost in their sauce that they just, they just want to keep, well, I guess it's not surprising. People just want to be, keep told lies. 
embrace authoritarianism, embrace stripping people of their civil liberties, of their constitutional rights, all for safety. It's fucking sickening. So, where do I go? All right, let's just go there. Why are the numbers this low? Why is there only 31,530 confirmed cases? Oh yeah, and it is the responsibility for the states and local governments to test. I'm a veteran. If I wanna get tested, I go to the VA. Everyone has health insurance, right? If you wanna get tested, go call your doctor, get a test. If they don't have them, that's on them. Supposedly the availability for testing has been massive. You know, if you're, and not just that, um, there's so many ways you can get tests. A lot of the hospitals, call your state and local governments. They should have testing for you. So, but don't look on the federal government. To do it, they got their hands full on enough right now. They really do. Okay, um, keeping the economy afloat with minimal damages through this idiocracy that we're experiencing right now is going to be, in my opinion, if they pull it off, one of the greatest achievements, financial achievements, of modern government in his the history of our modern world. It will be. This is crazy. Um, so let's go. Two months ago, three months ago, my son, nine years old, was sick for like two months straight. Real bad upper respiratory. There were several days where I literally, I was sitting right here, I was working on drones my mini quads, my FPV stuff, and I like could hear up through the furnace vent and him coughing so bad. And I remember waking him up, giving him medicine, and then sitting up most of the night listening to him for like two or three nights. Because I was that worried. It was really bad, you know? Come on. What do you think it was? Fact of the matter is, is that in mid-November when this thing was really spreading, Really, it was spreading in mid-November in China, Wuhan. Over 800 flights came from China internationally to the U.S. You know where the majority of those flights come? In San Francisco, Bay Area, baby. 30 minutes away from where I live. Come on. This is so simple. And, and we're gonna get into why this is not just this like crazy theory of mine, right? I shot this out. My sister, my parents, I've been talking, my sister will attest to this, okay? I've been telling her this for a while now and it's great. She's sending me every day news articles and different stuff being like, this is just what you said. Look, it's really, it was right. This is really happening. And I'm like, thank you. This was common sense, okay? We all had it. Um, over 800 flights flew into the U.S. The majority, bulk of them, coming in right here to the Bay Area. Okay, we have a huge Chinese population here in the Bay Area. Huge Chinatown. The university that I go to has a huge Chinese population. And even one of my professors admitted to me they all went home for winter break. When they came back, they brought something with them. What do you think that was? They came back from winter break well before January 29th or 30th uh, when the when Trump finally did the travel ban, which did. That is the one huge thing that it did save many, many of our lives, American lives. And he should be given credit for that. Well, all of these other Democrats and other uh, politicians were saying, it's safe. Come on out in the crowds. You have nothing to worry about. And now they're, they're saying that, that Trump was the one who's um, not handled this properly, didn't warn people, wasn't concerned about it. Yeah, they all called him a xenophobe and a racist when he bought, he, he just can't win with these people when he blocked travel to China. Okay, that's saved lives. China is scum. We're gonna get into that in a little bit, but um, 
So we had well pro proliferation of the virus here for months, mid-November to December to January to February. So mm, my mother was in the hospital in January and I remember going in in the waiting room and being like, I could not go in the waiting room. I was like, I got to get out of here. There was something going on. I'd never seen the waiting room that packed, that overflowing with people. Everyone was coughing and having trouble breathing upper respiratory. It was here and nobody knew it. People were too stupid to connect the dots. It was just a less vir virulent, vir I can't talk, virulent version. Vi viral, well, you know what I'm trying to say, version. Uh, then I think what was going through Italy and New York, but we all got it. I had it. I just didn't feel right for a week, but I wasn't really, I was one of these asymptomatic carriers, I think, but we don't know until we get an antibody test. So I've been pushing my VA, um, just last week that, Hey, we already all had it, that we have herd immunity. Let's look at these numbers. And I'm going to show you with graphs, how this is fact. You know, my son was sick for two months straight. I felt weird for a week. I think we all already had it. We need antibody tests. You don't have 800 people dying a day in New York. And 90 people dying across the entire state of California. Okay? Population density aside. Because we, we are seeing a spike in deaths in L.A. and stuff right now. But in SF, and in, in, in a large portion of California, I think we have herd immunity. So the UC medical is onto this. And you will see in mainstream media, this is why finally I'm making a video about it. Because if I just talk about this stuff, people go, oh, you're just crazy. You don't know what you're talking about when I do. Um, you, they will be citing a Santa Clara research that has found that the virus was actually using these antibody tests. They tested people throughout the Bay Area. The virus is actually 50 to 80 times more widespread than is being reported. Do the math. Okay. Herd immunity. So Right here in this wonderful, just give it a second to load up, I guess. There it is. This wonderful article. It tracks all of um, what's going on the coronavirus in California. We can see In my county, right here, I don't know if you can see this. See, I live in Contra Costa, 20 deaths. We're a huge, huge county right next to Oakland, San Francisco. This is where a ton of people that live in the city work and commute from. 20 deaths. We've heard immunity. We already had it. I mean, this is... So simple. And they want to make it into a boogeyman against Trump. Trump did what exactly needed to be done. What is the joke? Is Pelosi, bag of zombie dicks as they call her. She needs to go. She just keeps getting elected in because she's a woman and a Democrat. Wake up, California. Wake up. This state is completely toxic for small business. Okay, I don't want to move to Texas. So many Californians do, though, because they have the best tax um, structure. And they're not hostile to small business. It's just crazy. So then... Nothing can exist here in California except these giant mega corporations that do nothing but give workers the dick. Is that what you want? You want every single person in your state to have to work for Starbucks, Amazon, or Facebook? I mean, give me a break.
California? This is a homeless pandemic here? Yeah. Coronavirus is going to go through that. <laughs> that will do more for the homeless problem than any of these Democratic politicians' policies have in the last 20 years here. Watch. The virus will do more. Just... My state. Yeah. So, this is what I want to show you. <clears throat> this is the graph for all of the counties and the cases, right? And that's, and you can see, even Los Angeles is at their plateau more. All these other places, even with their tons of more testing, they just can't get it. Even the, this is crazy, okay? Everyone here already had it. That's what this graph tells me. This is not some, they're, and they're not going to upward swing. They're just going to go down even more as we enter into spring and summer. This thing is done. Open the economy back up. People need to live. And I will not accept destruction of my civil liberties or constitutional rights because you're a bunch of scared pussies who uh, think that you are in the name of safety, you can make people do whatever the fuck you want. These newscasters wearing masks while they do their news, you look stupid. You look ridiculous, okay? You don't need to wear a mask when you're the only one around doing a newscast, you idiots. I'm not wearing one. Like, if I have to to go into a store, I guess they're gonna make me. But out in public, in my house, around, no. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just done with this shit, man. I'm so done with it. So, you know, I called this thing coming from a long time ago. But I also know when to say enough's enough. People are being stupid. This is not gonna kill us, okay? Look, people that are terribly unhealthy and have, um, Things already, you know, strikes already against them. This can be pretty fatal. Like any time you get sick. Look, someone that is, you know, already a term, you know, <laughs> morbidly obese, has hypertension, diabetes, and then gets any kind of illness, that can just knock them out. I'm not trying to downplay the virus. I'm just being realistic about the statistics and the numbers. 350, 60 million people. And you wanna shut down the economy indefinitely for 60,000 deaths? That doesn't make sense. 15 plus million people out of work right now. This ends now. Everybody go back to work. I'm full on for those protests and I will be with you at the next one tomorrow. Freedom, baby. Let it ring.